Much of me, much of you, da 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 da. Look how hard me a work, oh God. Now feel much me work so hard. Confident out there, no one straight ahead, no. Much in my world, my world. I'm thinking of an animal that has four legs. Do you know which animal I'm thinking of? Probably not, because a lot of animals have four legs. It has fur all over its body. Do you know which one now? Well, that may have narrowed down your options, but it still could be a few. What if I said it had big ears, paws, and is man's best friend? Now you know, right? A dog. We needed more than one characteristic to clearly identify it. In geometry, the same thing can happen with plane figures. If I told you I was thinking of a four-sided figure, you may know that I'm thinking of a quadrilateral, but you won't know exactly how it looks because I didn't give enough information. Hi, my name is Mr. Mack, and in this lesson, we're going to talk about the angle, side, and symmetry properties of triangles and quadrilaterals. In this video, you're not just going to be listening. At some points, I am going to ask you to tell me what you think. I'll also give you activities to do, because I want you to exercise your brain muscles. Before we start, though, let's clearly explain what side angle and symmetry properties are. When an object is symmetrical, that means one part of the image can be perfectly reflected in or mirrors the other. It's very important for us to know where our mirror line is or where one part of the figure mirrors the other perfectly. In this picture, for example, Along where do you think one part would perfectly mirror the other? Our figure is symmetric along this line. We call this our line of symmetry. Do you notice it being symmetrical anywhere else? No. So we would say that our image has one line of symmetry. The next way we can describe a geometric figure is by using its angle properties. Remember an angle is the amount of turn between two lines among, around their common point. There are different types of angles. Do you remember any? An acute angle is less than 90 degrees. A right angle is equal to 90 degrees. And an obtuse angle is an angle greater than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees. So we will be looking out for those properties as well. Third, we can describe a geometric figure using its sides. By now, you would know that a polygon with three sides is a triangle and a polygon with four sides is a quadrilateral. Since we have covered the three properties, let us start to use them to describe triangles. There are two different ways that we can classify triangles, by their sides and by their angles. Let us first start with their sides. We're going to do one together and then I want you to do the other two on your own. By their sides, there are three types of triangles, equilateral, isosceles, and scalene. An isosceles triangle has at least two equal sides. We call them its legs. Just by looking, we realize that it has one line of symmetry that runs through its vertex. There is no other line about which any part of the triangle is perfectly mirrored on the next side. What can we say about its angles? The sum of the interior angles of a triangle is 180 degrees. That is true for all triangles. However, in an isosceles triangle, since two sides are equal, then whatever angle is formed between one of the equal sides at the base of the triangle must be the same as the other. That is, if this leg forms a 50 degree angle with the base 
then the next leg also forms a 50 degree angle with the base. So, as a, so an isosceles triangle has at least two equal angles. Now let's put this all together to describe an isosceles triangle. An isosceles triangle has three sides, with at least two of them being equal. It has one line of symmetry through its vertex, and it has at least two equal angles. Wow, that's so precise. Now we know exactly what an isosceles triangle looks like wherever we see it. Now, could you do the same for the equilateral and scalene triangles? I'll put them right here and then give you a few minutes to think about it. Pause this video and give it a try. Okay, now let's see what you came up with. Let's start with the equilateral triangle. As the name suggests, its three sides are equal. Since its three sides are equal, then its interior angles must also be equal too. Finally, how many lines of symmetry did you find? Well, it has a line of symmetry at each vertex. One here, one here, and one there. You can fold the equilateral triangle at any of these lines and get a perfect mirror. Thus, it has three lines of symmetry. Therefore, we can say that an equilateral triangle is a three-sided figure whose sides are equal, angles are equal, and it has three lines of symmetry. Next, a scalene triangle has three sides. But as you can see, none of the sides are equal, none of its angles are equal, and it does not have any lines of symmetry. We can also describe a triangle by the types of angles it has. In an acute triangle, all angles are smaller than 90 degrees. A right triangle has a right angle. A right angle is equal to 90 degrees and in an obtuse angle one of its angles is larger than a right angle. Here's a little opportunity to test what you know. Look at each space in this grid. In each space I want you to sketch a triangle that fits the criteria. For example, in the first space you should sketch an acute equilateral triangle if possible. It would look something like this. Can you sketch a triangle for every box in the grid? I'll give you about a minute to do so. Pause this video, give it a try. Now, let's see what you came up with. I'm going to leave you to have fun with the rest of the grid, but I'll do just two more. Is it possible to have a right angled isosceles triangle? Well, for that to be possible, it has to have two equal sides, or angles. If a right triangle just means that it has one right angle, then it's possible that the other two angles could be equal. If the sum of the angles in the triangle is 180 degrees, then the other two angles must sum to 90 degrees. Since these angles are equal, then 2 multiplied by our angle is 90 degrees. 90 degrees divided by 2 is 45 degrees. Therefore, a right isosceles triangle would look like this. How about an obtuse equilateral triangle? If the angles in an equilateral are equal and sum to 180, then we would need three of the same angles greater than 90 degrees that sum to 180 degrees. That's not possible though. Because if 90 added to 90 added to 90 is greater than 180, then angles greater than 90 degrees must also be greater than 180 degrees, which is the sum of all the triangles, all the angles, sorry, in a triangle. Now let's go to the next part of this lesson on the angle, side, and symmetry properties of quadrilaterals. A quadrilateral is a four-sided polygon. We can describe a quadrilateral in terms of its sides. For example, 
all of these figures are parallelograms. What can you say about its sides, angles, and lines of symmetry? You'll notice that in all cases, its opposite sides are equal. They are also parallel, meaning they will never touch. Next, none of its interior angles are right angles. Well, they don't have to be. We can't say for sure what its angles will be. It depends on its orientation. So we can't identify a parallelogram by its angles. And how many lines of symmetry can you find? Again, just like with angles, it doesn't always have to have a line of symmetry. It can, but it doesn't have to. Therefore, we can't identify a parallelogram using its lines of symmetry. So we can say that a parallelogram can be defined as a quadrilateral whose opposite sides are parallel and equal. There are at least five other types of quadrilaterals that we can describe using angle, symmetry, and side properties. I am going to give you three of these in groups. Study these groups of quadrilaterals carefully and see if you can come up with their geometric properties. Pause this video and give it a try. Okay, let's start with our squares. This one's pretty easy, right? The, all of the squares have four equal sides where the opposite sides are parallel. They also have four right angles. How many lines of symmetry did you find? There is one here, right there, here, and there, all the time. So it has four lines of symmetry in all. Therefore, we can say that a square is a quadrilateral that has equal sides and angles. Its opposite sides are parallel and it has four lines of symmetry. Next, let's look at our rectangles. What do you notice about its sides? The opposite sides are equal and parallel. Also, like the square, it has four right angles. Did you find any lines of symmetry? It has one here and one there, two lines of symmetry. Sometimes it may have more than two if all its sides are equal. Therefore, for our definition, we know that a rectangle has at least two lines of symmetry. So we can say that a rectangle is a quadrilateral with opposite sides being equal and parallel. Its four interior angles are equal and it has two lines of symmetry. Let's look at our third quadrilateral, the trapezium. Now with each, you likely notice that even though the sides are not always equal, they always have a pair of parallel sides. We found a pair here and we found a pair there. So that's one thing that we can ident use to identify a trapezium. How about its angles? You also probably noticed that in each, the angles didn't necessarily have to be equal. In one, we had a right angle, but in the others, we did not. Therefore, we can't use any specific angle properties to describe a trapezium. Finally, what about its lines of symmetry? Some trapeziums had lines of symmetry, while some did not. For example, we could find a line of symmetry here for this trapezium, but couldn't find any for the others. Therefore, like our conclusion with angles, we cannot use any specific symmetric properties to describe a trapezium. So we can define a trapezium as a quadrilateral that has at least one pair of parallel sides. Oops! Adrian went ahead and wrote down the properties for the kite and the rhombus. Take a minute to compare his notes and let me know if you agree with him along with your reasons why.
Now, let's see what he wrote about a kite. He said that a kite has one pair of equal angles. Is that true? Well, it did in at least two of the figures. However, we notice in the green square, it has four equal angles like we had discovered before. So we have to make a small adjustment. A kite has at least one pair of equal angles. He also said that it has one set of equal sides. Did you agree? Well, if we look at it closely, we notice that in all cases, it had two or more of the sides being equal. If these angles are equal, then the sides that they form must be similar. Since they intersect at the same point, they must be more than similar, they must be congruent. And we can agree that it has at least one line of symmetry. So we can adjust Adrian's definition to say that a kite has at least two pairs of equal sides, at least one pair of equal angles, and at least one line of symmetry. What about his definition of a rhombus? Based on these figures, we can agree. It has four equal sides, its opposite sides are parallel, and it has two lines of symmetry. We've learned a lot so far. These are very important things to keep in mind. Thanks for joining. I hope you enjoyed the lesson and I'll see you in the next one. Look how hard me a work on